Bruna Pavan, and welcome to Lobster Diving 101. In this video, we're going to show you the gear that you can use to catch them, different techniques on your capturing them, and the legal ways to secure them. So let's go diving! As you can see in the footage, this is a typical dive in South Florida. This reef is off of Boca Raton, and here, it is common to do what is known as drift dives, which is when you swim along with the current and each group carries their own dive flag. It is a mandatory requirement for all dive groups to carry their own flags on the surface to protect them from other boats in the area. Drift dives are very relaxing, require little no effort on the diver, and allow you to cover a large amount of area in a short amount of time. While diving, it is important to pay attention to the terrain of the reef as an indication of where the bugs are. A good lobster hunter is 75% observation skills and 25% technique, but you must find the lobster first. They will almost always be found in holes with their heads poking out, so look for waving antennas and movement. White sand outside of holes and brain coral can also be features to look for. Another sign that a lobster may be lurking around is the presence of lionfish. Lionfish on a reef means that there is an abundance of life there, so usually where there is lionfish, there is also some well-fed lobsters. When you find the lobster, make sure not to confront it head on. Instead, approach it from either above or on the side and use your tickle stick or snare to either pin it against the side of the rock or tap the tail a couple times from the back. Take your time. If you do it correctly and not too aggressively, the lobster will come out of its hole with tail and antennas prone. Lobsters swim by snapping their tails quickly as a means of propulsion, similar to a squid. If you're using a net and tickle stick, you can tap the back of the lobster's tail being careful not to touch any other body part of him while you slide the stick behind him to make him walk out of the hole. At the same position using a snare, you can lasso the tail and lock it as fast and as swift as possible. Always place the net behind him and touch the top of the lobster's head for it to swim backwards into the net. Once you have it inside the net, make sure it is secure before you reach to grab it because the lobster is more than capable to swim out of it. In this footage, you can see the use of the automatic snare, or the equalizer. It is very effective, especially for those who do not have much experience. With just a press of a button, the lasso will retract and secure the lobster. After you have captured the lobster, be sure to check for eggs, measure it, and then secure it inside your bag. Be extra cautious and aware of your surroundings while you're in pursuit. There are a lot of things you can rub up against or get bit by if you don't see it before it sees you. Nothing can ruin a good dive quite as much as a lionfish sting or some fire coral. Also, be extra careful not to damage sea sand, soft corals, and avoid stirring up the sand the best you can. A good hunter will never leave a trace. Always pay attention to what your computer reads and beeps about, and be sure to listen for boats during your safety stop. If you hear any unusual noise, stay down longer until it disappears. My favorite thing about lobstering is the excitement about going out and finding stuff. It makes me a better diver by making me be more aware of my surroundings, my buoyancy, and all that good stuff. And also being able to come home and take pictures with my cats is also a big bonus. I learned a lot of my stuff from the book Catching the Bug by my good friend Jim Matthey, or Chiefy. I recommend this book to newcomers and experts alike because it teaches you where to find them, how you can get them, how to prepare them, and the perfect way, how to enjoy them. My weapon of choice is the green machine. This is the first snare I'm going to introduce to you guys. A snare has a lasso and sometimes a locking system. To use a snare, the lobster has to be upright and you put the lasso around its tail and snap it fast. This has a locking system, so whenever you lock it, the lobster is pretty much stuck there until you open the lasso. You can use this button to release the lasso so that way it's hands free so that way you can go over here grab the lobster without any issue. This is what I have in my hand here is a gauge. This is what you use to measure the lobsters out. Um, the rule in Florida for the Florida spiny lobsters is that from the horns to the carapace it has to be three inches long. So this in my hand is a metal gauge. This is my personal preference. And in my other hand here, this is a plastic gauge. But both have the same measurements. The other snare we have out there is the automatic snare. Um, it's just like the other snare before, how you lasso it around the tail. But instead of having a locking mechanism where you have to pull on it and it'll lock, just by pressing this button, 
it locks just on the tail like that. The last snare I'm going to show you is the non-locking snare. Some people prefer this and a lot of snares that are homemade do not have locks either. So with this technique, you just gotta make sure that as you're pulling this one back and you have the lobster, you slide your arm forward to grab the lobster and then secure it. Let's talk gloves. These gloves right here are my favorite personal pair. These gloves are pretty thin. They're made out of neoprene, uh, but they still get the job done just as well. These gloves right here are Dyneema. Uh, nowadays, they're making these gloves a lot tougher. In Florida, there's a lot of lionfish, so these gloves are actually lionfish puncture proof. They're made out of Dyneema. Our last pair of gloves we're gonna show here are made out of Kevlar, and they're very strong, very tough, but they're only lobster proof, not lionfish proof. In Florida, there are two kinds of lobster divers. There are some who prefer the snare, like I do, and there are others who prefer the combination of the net and the tickle stick. By using the tickle stick, you shove out the lobster from its little hole, push it over, push it over, and you have to get it so that way the back is facing in towards the net. So after you get it right underneath the net, all you gotta do is drop the net right on top of it, grab the lobster from the top of the bag, just like this, pick it up, take it out, check for eggs, Measure it and stick it right inside your bag. Let's talk about lobster bags. The first bag I want to introduce to you guys is called the wire bag, or also called the catch bag. This one's very simple, easy to use, but unfortunately sometimes it takes two hands, and when you guys open it, maybe your catch might make a run for it. These two bags I'm about to show you guys are called the lobster hotels. They call them the lobster hotels because once the lobsters check in, they don't check back out. Make sure that when you guys are putting the lobster inside these bags that you put them in tail first, that way you guys don't have any trouble with antennas breaking or having to shove them in any weird way. This bag over here is mesh, fully mesh, and has a zipper on the bottom. It's great for people who are swimming, stuff like that, who don't want drag, but the downside is that the lobsters may puncture your skin on your leg. This is called the Deluxe Lobster Hotel. It has mesh on the side, and also a canvas on the other side, so that way when you drag it along, it won't cause any harm to your leg. This also comes with a clip that you can clip onto your BCD and a zipper on the side for easy access. My favorite part about lobstering is being able to go out on the dive with my father and find lobsters together. It teaches you a lot as far as being able to be more aware of your surroundings and controlling your buoyancy a lot better. The mini season is only for recreational lobster divers and is the last consecutive Wednesday and Thursday in July starting at 12.01 a.m. on Wednesday and concluding at 12 o'clock midnight on Thursday. Here I am using the snare to tap the back of the lobster. Using this technique it'll tap it out just the right way if you need to. Once you tap it a couple times this one's a little bit stubborn. Sometimes the tickle um, to the back won't get them up. There's a technique of using the snare as a tickle stick. Once you tap it a couple times from behind, slowly, slowly, slowly it'll make its way out. Man, this one's stubborn. At this point, in, in this position, all you have to do is release the lasso from the locking to make it from the tickle stick into the snare. Last one behind the lobster. The tricky thing is, is getting the lasso underneath the tail in the right position. Because if the lobster feels the lasso, it'll try to swim away or use its antennas to push it away. The lasso is a little bit bent at this point. <laughs> it's not using the correct leverage. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, it's pushing. Okay, right when you get it underneath it, woo, that one's mean. Okay, as you can see it there. Now that the tail's up and the antennas are prone just like that, slip it behind the lobster just like that. And snap as fast as you can. There it is. This one's big. See, it took a while, but you gotta be patient, because if you're not patient and you run right into it, it'll swim away. This one's pretty big. Oh, 
always be sure to measure it no matter what. Man, this one's a little bit jumpy, but that's okay. It's okay if some of the lobster legs fall off. That tends to happen. You're going to take it home anyway. It'll be food for another fish. Just be extremely careful if you know that it's small. Not to break any antennas or if you're ever unsure about its size, be extremely careful not to break any antennas or any legs. So we'll have to live with that for the rest of their lives and they won't be able to fight off the other lobster hunters trying to get at them too. Off to the next one. The recreational bag limit is 6 lobsters per person per day during the regular season and 12 lobsters per person per day for the mini season, except in Monroe County and Biscayne National Park. This is a female lobster and you can tell it's a female. She's pregnant, she has eggs. The way that she's moving her legs back like that, that's why she grooms her eggs. The regular season for both commercial and recreational lobster harvesting begins August 6th and ends March 31st. Now isn't this a pretty sight? Now this is quite the honey hole. This is three lobsters in one hole. Always take your time with holes like these because it's extremely careful. Once one lobster sees what's going on, they'll pretty much catch on to the game and try to swim away best they can. But if you do it quick, they don't, you don't give them that opportunity. You must have a valid Florida recreational saltwater fishing license and a lobster permit unless you are hunting on a dive boat with a charter vessel fishing license. Unfortunately, this one has eggs. You can't take it in. But whenever you're handling a pregnant lobster, be extremely careful not to graze the eggs. Those eggs are extremely sensitive. Be extremely careful, especially using the snare, not to snap on the egg. You'll die, and then there won't be any more lobsters for you to harvest later on. It actually takes two and a half years for the lobster to become legal size. Possession while on or below the water of more of six spiny lobster per recreational harvester per day is prohibited. Now this is camouflage. sure to always grab the lobster from behind the antennas whenever you're grabbing the lobster the antennas are extremely sharp and you get a better grip on them each diver must have their own measuring device while in the water the spiny lobster carapace must be measured larger than three inches and be measured in the water no egg bearing females may be taken Always stick the lobster in tail first into the lobster hotel. What is in your lobster bag counts towards your catch and limit. If it's in your bag, you own it. Lobsters must be kept in whole condition above and below the water until you return to shore. No harvesting of lobster from artificial habitat is allowed. Man, two good sized lobsters in one hole. You really can't ask for more. Divers are prohibited from using any device that could puncture, penetrate, or crush the shell or flesh of the lobster. Sometimes you have to play with the lobsters a bit, sometimes they don't always want to go back to the hole. What a full bag. It's still looking. Divers are prohibited from using bleach or any other chemical solution to harvest lobster. Dive flags on boats must be at least 20 by 24 inches in size and on floats carried by divers, 12 by 12 inches in size. All dive flags must have stiffeners to keep the flags unfurled. As you can see, as my father is using the net and tickle stick combination, take a look at the terrain. There's white sand, there's corals, there's holes, and there's also some line fish in the background, so it's a really good sign. Now all I gotta do is tap the head and it'll swim right into the net. Always make sure to lay the net flat down. 
this is the tricky part. You gotta make sure that the pocket you created to lock the lobster into the net, you can also fit your hand into. The worst part is trying to get it out of the hole. The only downside to using a net is that if you don't pay attention to it, the lobster will swim right out of the net. So be sure to grab it first before you flip it over. automatic snare or the equalizer. Extremely simple. It does not get any easier than this. There you go. To press the button, that's it. This is a female lobster holding eggs. You cannot, cannot, cannot take female lobsters holding eggs. This is where you have to use other techniques to stick the snare inside of a different hole to tap the lobster out. They call these honeycomb holes. Usually, most of the time, or a lot of the time, on a reef with ledges, you'll find the lobster stuck in holes just like this one. Sure to pull on the snare fast and grab the lobster as soon as you can because sometimes whenever the lobster moves too quick it can easily slip out of it. Take your time with these lobster hotels. They're probably the best bags out there but man these lobsters will put up a fight. Questing back up. <laughs> This is a good and bad thing when the lobster's too big to get inside of the bag. Sometimes you'll have to ask for backup and have one person hold it while you try to stuff the lobster in. But that's always a good thing. <laughs> Dad, can I get some help? <laughs> Here you can see a antenna just waving around. Sometimes you gotta stick your hand inside the hole. Be extremely careful, check the surrounding areas, make sure there are no fire coral, lionfish, or anything you can graze up on. Because once you're at this point, it's pretty much free game for anybody. You can pretty much go in and grab it. The only thing is you need a lot of leverage to get the lobster out of it. And man, I'll be pushing and tugging for a good five minutes before I can actually have somebody help me get it out. These things are tough and they'll put up a strong, strong fight to get them out of their holes here. Here's a tip for whenever you're using your hands, just get a lobster out of a hole. This way if you grab it at the knuckle of the antenna, the lobster can't do anything at all. 
it is pretty much motionless. Always, always, always grab it at the knuckle whenever you're trying to measure the carapace as well. It won't move. Oh, and never stick your hand inside of a hole with another lobster unless you're using gloves. I almost feel like that's a given. Thank you everyone for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now good luck chasing tail and be safe. I'll see you guys out there.